I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This is the meeting of the Morrison County Board of Adjustment. The board is made up of citizens from the five commissioner districts of the county. The purpose of this board is to review applications of property owners for relief from the strictest interpretation of the county ordinances. Our guidelines are established in state statutes, chapter 394.27, subsection seven. The decision made by this board is the result of whether or not a practical difficulty has been determined. If the board determines there is a practical difficulty, we then review the guidelines in the form of six criteria questions that are answered at the end of the applicant's request. A final decision is then made. Each request is evaluated on its own unique practical difficulty. Variances are granted to the land, not to the landowner. This board may, in addition, impose conditions in the granting of variances to ensure compliance. After your public hearing is complete, you may leave if you wish. Well, they sure abandoned ship on us, didn't they? <laughs> Nothing uh, any of us said or did. <laughs> All right, uh, first on our agenda is um, Dan, Daniel and Ann Ackman. I assume the, those are, you, they, they are those, those are they. <laughs> Please come forward and sit at the front table, pull up a microphone. Um, 31575 Lowry Circle uh, Cushing. Application for a variance to add on to a non-conforming structure located in Scandia Valley Township on Lake Alexander. Correct. Great. State your names for the record, please. Dan Ackman. I'm Ann. Hi, Dan and Ann. <laughs> okay, then the staff report. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, again, this is a variance request to expand a non-conforming structure located in Section 28 of Scandia Valley Township. The ordinance references for this request is section 301, 301.6, 706.1, and 706.3. Here's a plat map of Scandi Valley Township and the red dot is the location of the parcel. And then here is the variance request received from the applicant. And then here is a survey also provided by the applicant. And then a couple of site plans. And then here are, this. these were not in your packet. These uh, were provided by the applicant after the packet had gone out. Here's an aerial photograph of the property, and there's two parcels outlined in blue and yellow. And then here is also the property just with the elevation contours on. And then here's some oblique imagery of the parcel. And then here is a picture from the shoreline. And then here's some site photographs taken at the viewing on the 13th of May. Again, the property is in Section 28 of Scandi Valley Township. It is on Lake Alexander, which is a general development lake. The property is made up of two parcels, and together they are a conforming single lot, which means it's at least 30,000 square feet and 120 feet wide. The property is 200 feet wide and 32,385 square feet. According to the assessor's records, the 720 square foot dwelling was built in 1950. The dwelling is 68.1 feet from the lake. About 10% of the dwelling is within setback from the lake. The rest of the cabin is within the compliant building envelope. 
A building envelope is available on the property and there you'll see it on the uh, screen there outlined in pink. The applicant purchased the property in March of 2021. The applicant is requesting a variance to place a 1,204 square foot addition onto the existing home. The addition would be within the building envelope. The impervious surface, including the addition, is 10.4% and 25% impervious surface is allowed. At the development review team meeting, staff discussed the following with the applicant, um, that the proposed addition would add one bedroom and one bathroom. The only improvement proposed for the existing dwelling is replacement of the windows. There is enough septic system capacity for an additional bedroom. The addition would be a story and a half with a loft area. Uh, we discuss the condition of the shoreline. Um, only about 50 feet of it is disturbed. The rest is natural and planning to leave it that way. Uh, stormwater currently goes to the lake and the new roof line will be opposite of the existing home. The, app the applicable comprehensive land use plan goals is natural resources and open spaces, goal C2. Shoreline development, goal D1. And then the water plan goals and objectives is the surface water goal, objective B. Land use and development goal, objectives B and D. 124 notices were sent. No comment was received prior to the public hearing. And then here are your finding fact and decision questions, Mr. Chair. Thank you. Would the applicants like to add anything at this time? Oh, no, that, that answers it. That's okay. what we'd like to do. Okay. Thank you for providing uh, the uh, other information on the on the house and the other views. That's helpful. Sure. We, we were we did have a uh, local architect help us make sure we were playing by the right rules. So that helped us. Yeah, that's that's a big investment. It's nice to do it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And nice to have good advice, and uh, and nice to have land services uh, <laughs> informed yes. and uh, in the loop. Uh, so, um, board of adjustment members, anybody have questions for the applicants? Mr. Chair, uh, first, uh, I noticed you just recently purchased that, and. Uh, did you or uh, were you informed that you had a non-conforming structure that, uh, when you purchased that? No. I know that is frustrating. I suspect they didn't know. Yeah, and and here it is frustrating for us as a board to see. And we wish that people would be informed that. So do we. And yeah. then you won't have to be going through this because you have a conforming lot, beautiful lot, and it's large enough there to hold this. And here you are in a structure situation. When you purchased it, were you planning on putting addition on right away there? No, I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No, I think we were a little surprised by how much our family has taken to cabin life. Hmm. Okay. So we need a little more space. Yeah. Okay. Our children and our grandchildren like to come up, and everybody wants to be at Papa's cabin. So <laughs> <laughs> Papa needs more room. That's a good thing. That's yes. a wonderful thing. It's a thing. wonderful thing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you much. I have no more questions at this time. Okay. So this is a seasonal cabin, or will it be, will it be year round? It is, it is now, but this will make it year round. Oh, okay. Currently, you live where right now? Uh, Buffalo, Minnesota. Okay. Yeah. Just curious. So, Morrison County might be your permanent residence, huh? We hope so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be. Nice. Okay, just just a reminder, this is um, a compliant property. It's over over 30,000 square feet. It's got 200 feet of lakeshore. And the reason we're here today is because the cabin is 68.1 feet from the high water mark and not 75 feet. So we're 6.9 feet off. So uh, um, the... Uh, Anybody else have a question? <clears throat> Go ahead, Dave. I was out there this afternoon, looked at it, and then there's Oh, yeah, that's right. Thanks for reminding. Oh. What, when were you out, Dave? This afternoon, about 2 o'clock or so, 3 o'clock. Okay, and then on the 13th, um, the rest of us were out, Brent, myself, Clint, and Marvin, and Sharon. I just want, the property. want to bring up, you talked about that. There's only about, what, five feet of one corner of the house that encroaches 
on that 75 feet. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, considering the size of the lot and the difficult situations we've had to deal with before, this one's got a lot of the boxes already checked off as far as conforming lot, uh, just that one little corner there. We've got how much of the lake shore is just natural, just as it was, it was the way it was before people came there. And so I, again, I just thought that was, in, in looking at it, you know, I thought that was a lot of, a lot of room for runoff or water absorption. Be, and then what do we got for impervious after we get done with this, we're looking at still less than what, 12% impervious? Yeah, 10.4. You know, I mean, yeah. they they really weren't even close to crossing the line on a lot of other things. Not just my thought, it's just that one little corner of that house there and in a conforming lot. So I'll leave it at that, Dave. I'm sure you'll have a lot to add. <laughs> uh, thank you, Dave. Good observations. Uh, yeah, I'd like to add too that uh, you know, there's nothing in that 75 feet other than that corner of the house. You know, Correct. normally we find accessory structures uh, or patios or whatever, uh, and there's nothing there. Uh, that's a unique property, a very nice property, and uh, it looks. My gut is tells me that they did measure 75 feet. They measured from the lake, but the high water marks off the lake, six-ish feet. So that's just my what if thing. Certainly could be the reason. But they were close. Mm -hmm. Or it's kind of just a natural spot to put the house, too. Yeah. Um, or what were the requirements in the 1950s? Yeah. Probably mm -hmm. different than they are today. Yeah, that's right where the contour starts sloping quickly, yeah. and uh, mm -hmm. so it's a good spot. <laughs> Other questions? Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Clint. Um, so your driveway, I was just a little bit confused with the stakes and stuff that are out there. Is the driveway part of it an easement to get in there, or Correct. it's not all yours, part of it's an easement? Correct. Okay. We have an easement on the neighbor's property okay. for the driveway. For a little ways, and then you get on to yours. Interesting, the neighbor to our horn has the same thing. Okay. Okay, Something so I, I just, just wanted to clarify that. Yep. That's what we assume. So Could we go back to that survey uh, surveyor's picture or drawing? Which driveway are you talking about, Clint? I the guess. one that goes to the house. Yep. Okay. All right. Yep. The one on the south side. Yep. Okay. But there is a driveway on the north side, too. Correct. Okay. But you can see the neighbor's driveway in dark is on our property. Okay, yep. It's similar to what ours is on the neighbor's property. Hmm. Hmm. Hopefully everything shifts yeah, everything amicably yeah, for everybody. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. yeah. All right, thanks. Um, I guess I'd like a clarification on um, the, um, it's not really a letter, but a, a summary of uh, stormwater and um, the shoreline that they uh, included in the packet. This letter that you submitted. Yeah. Um, just a clarification for me on that. Um, you know, and then I saw your picture of the house today and, um, and, uh, the fact that the the roof line slopes away are perpendicular to the lake, correct. And it looks like you could, I mean, you don't point it out in this, but you could easily uh, gutter that and direct it away from the lake oh, versus. Sure. Oh yeah, easily. Okay. Yeah. Would you be open to coming up with a water or storm water plan that you know is um, agreeable between you and land services? Sure. Absolutely. They're very, okay. he's very easy to work with, and, yeah. uh, and I think it would be just directing the water away from the lake as best you can. Can I utilize a rain barrel for my gardens? Yeah, but they only hold so much water. <laughs> yeah. Last yeah. year wasn't a problem. It's no. the whole year this year, right? Well, you'd have a couple of rain barrels full already. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and then yeah. you say on lake, lake shore management that you're planning on joining the property owners and yep. taking part in that restoration program. What is that program? Could you, do you know We're anything about it? Just getting into it. We just learned about it the other, a couple weeks ago. Um, but it's uh, kind of acknowledging the, 
restoration or the maintenance of the natural lake shore. And mm -hmm. our youngest son is into the environment and he's going to spearhead that for us. Yeah. It's not, it's not, so it's not digging up and making 200 feet of lake shore. It's leaving the cattails where they are and kind of leaving the, the, the natural substance that's in place mm -hmm. in place. Yeah. yeah. I guess a good guideline for you is, you know, the taller things grow, the deeper their roots out grow, and the more they hold that um, soil. soil in place. You've only been there a year, but you see most of your yard is, well, moss <laughs> mm -hmm. and bare spots too, which, you know, I would hope that somehow you could improve on that over the years too. Yes. And uh, with less mowing and more seasonable rains, yeah. I would guess yes. you might have uh, better coverage than that. But um, so um, I don't know that we need to add a condition on that, but I guess I'd like um, a stormwater plan agreed upon between you and the shoreland specialist. Which Will you provide that person's name to us and then we can reach out and they probably have suggestions and will help us out with that? Super. Yeah, the more water that goes towards the road, the better. And the yeah. more likely that your uh, lakeside property is going to green up and grass up and, okay. Um, other thoughts by anybody? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I wanted to explain this if you don't already when Dave was talking about directing the water away from the lake. I think we've all seen uh, a few of these lakes. Uh, I use Shamina, for instance, like that, where we've had all this water come in there and create all kinds of issues. And uh, here it's getting filtered this way before it goes in a lake. And your Alec is a beautiful lake. It's one of Morrison County's um, uh, top resources, and we'd like to keep it that way, sure. and I'm sure that you would also like to keep it that way. So that's our reasoning behind this here. Makes total sense for me. Okay, thank you. Any other thoughts? Um, that, uh, back uh, by your garage on the north end of the property, or is that, yeah, whatever end of the property that is, uh, there's kind of a um, cutout in that property edge, on the edge of that property. Um, yeah, alongside We're, the You the follow garage. that driveway up? Yeah. yeah. Do you know what the intention of that is? It doesn't seem to be a problem. What is your future plan for that? We don't know why it's there or how it's there. Almost looked like somebody was going to build something there at one time. It is on your property, though, it, it looks is. like. Yeah. It is, for sure. Right now, we have no plans for it, no. Mm -hmm. Don't, yeah. It sure looks like somebody dug it out. Yeah. But... It looks kind of sketchy, but it doesn't seem to be creating any problems. No. I, th no. I think one of the neighbors had said that when it was two lots, people who owned that had lived in the garage or had stayed in the garage and the camper and had planned to build. Their plans fell apart. Oh, when there were two lots. And nothing ever happened. And then when the second lot became available, the Borahavers bought that second lot. Oh, that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, that'd be a nice area to sort of get some vegetation in and restore. Uh, but, okay, thanks for clarifying that. Any other questions? Are we ready for public input? Okay, we'll go out to, for public input if there is any. Uh, anything, any input at this time for or against this um, application? I'd, I'd just like to say one thing here, just so everybody's aware of. It's speculation, but um, if you, can you pull up the one for the billing envelope? Hmm. So if you look at the, on the building envelope here, where the cabin, where the, the shoreline, uh, the 75 feet cuts through the corner of that cabin, my speculation is they did measure it, but they never squared it to the lake. Because if you look, it's crooked with the garage. It's it's kind of square with the road and not with the lake. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we don't know what happened back in 1950 or whatever. But yeah. if I was going to guess, if you'd square that cabin up, it would be in the 75 foot. So I don't know if anybody saw that or not. That's why I just brought it to the attention. But that's pure speculation. <clears throat> 
Yeah, I don't know that 75 feet was the ordinance even then. No, but I'm saying if they would have... Yeah, if, if they, they would have squared it with the lake, we wouldn't have no issue, you know. Yeah. Or the creek in the property line. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Public input. I'll ask three times. Is there any public input? Is there any public input? As there's no public input, we'll close the meeting to public input at this time and. Um, other questions, or are you ready for the criteria questions? Okay. Okay, we're going to start off question number one with you, Brent. Um, is the request in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the Morrison County Land Use Ordinance and Comprehensive Plan? Uh, Mr. Chair, I believe it is. Um, this is... Uh, combined two lots here that make it one conforming lot uh, looks like approximately 200 feet of lakeshore um, 148 and 212 feet deep uh, on each side um, what they're proposing is meeting uh, current setbacks in that uh, environment however uh, attaching it to that uh, existing structure makes it um, uh, impossible for them to do without this variance and so they're applying for a variance to do just that and I think that is in harmony with the general purposes and in, in the intent um, of the Morrison County land use uh, ordinance okay, thank you yeah I personally think this is the most important question to, that we answer the intent of the ordinance is to um, you know enhance natural and preserve natural resources to um, create a natural setting to protect um, um, surface water and groundwater um, to um, be consistent with the uh, area that it's zoned for. Uh, and um, this request, uh, this does all of that. It's a um, just seven feet encroachment on the 75 foot setback. 10.4% uh, total um, impervious surface after construction. All of it outside of that 75 foot setback, which is you know, just something we don't see very often. It's just uh, very excellent. Hopefully you can maintain that. Your plans show that you plan to re continue respecting that, even with that patio that you're adding. Um, it's a very natural setting, well treated, and you, your plans are to maintain that. Um, with that stormwater plan, I think you can get even more water going away from the lake and preserve that natural shoreline even better and even enhance it. Um, so, um, yeah, I think it is consistent with the intent of the ordinance, which is to do all of those things. Uh, anybody else have anything to add to that? Number two, is the applicant proposing to use the property in a, ma a reasonable manner not permitted by the land use ordinance? Um, did I get that right? 124 notices were sent out? That's what I wrote down. 124. Okay, I can't read my own writing. So 124, 129, and no feedback. Uh, um, so uh, obviously, all of these people assumed it was a reasonable request. Um, uh, reasonable it just isn't reasonable in our eyes, but also reasonable on what the Im impact is. Um, you know, it's. Right now, it protects all of the um, um, nice things about the property. That um, it, it it doesn't uh, infringe on any of the uh, uh, reasonable uses that are in place now. It's um, again protects the uh, shoreline and directs water away from the shore, um, and no more use even in that 75 foot setback. No more in construction. So anybody else have anything to add to that? Mr. Chair, I just want to reiterate uh, something that we were taught in our training session and uh, we don't see many of these. It was talked about by the DNR, natural shorelines are healthy shorelines. And so we uh, applaud you for uh, uh, the route you're planning to take with us here. Okay. Then we'll go on to number three. I, I, 
Sorry, Brent, I think I took your turn last time. Your turn to start this time. <laughs> no, I was on the first one. <laughs> you were first. Oh, my golly, I was right then. <laughs> then, Clint, your, your turn. Thank you. I seldom uh, catch myself being right. Okay, number three, will the issuance of the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Okay, Mr. Chair. Yep. Um, I believe it will maintain the essential character. Um, it's an uh, area that's uh, full of lake homes. Um, this particular one, I think with the, the hill that's there, you're not even going to really see it. Um, you'll be able to see it between the hill and the neighbors as you drive by, and that's it. And uh, from the lake side, I believe the way the landscape is, um, the addition that's on there, you maybe see some of the front, but you're not going to um, see it be, it ain't going to be something that's going to look like it's a huge mansion and stick out like a sore thumb. So I think it'll blend in nicely with the surrounding area and then the uniqueness of that property. I think it kind of keeps it hidden. So um, with the extra um, acreage or area that you have on being it's two lots and it's conforming uh conforming lot um i i just think it it'll fit real nice and maintain the character of that that whole local area so that's what i have for that one okay anybody else like to add all i'll say is i agree totally with clint had to state with that he stated quite well Yeah, it'll have the uh, character of compliance, which we don't often see. Uh, okay, ready for number four. Um, is the alleged practical difficulty due to circumstances unique to the property? Um, we're starting out with you, Dave. Well, the only the uniqueness of the property is that it was built in the 1950s, and we're, what are we, six feet into the 75 feet. That would be the only unique or... Uh, uh, the uh, uh, dip practical difficulty circumstance. Uh, I'll get it right here. Circumstances unique to the property. That's the only difficult. Yes, it is. Uh, that would be our only difficulty. Okay. When? Yeah, I'd probably add that. Um, you know, it was stated earlier that this house was built in 1950. Back then, they didn't have a 75 foot. Um, set back from the lake. Um, we're pretty lucky that this was just set back so far. And I do believe if they would have squared it up with the lake instead of the road, which uh, I'm, I'm a person that's pretty particular when it comes to squaring things up, especially uh, my own place. When somebody puts something in crooked and I got to square everything up with it, it kind of really makes me perturbed. But I, I just think that if they would have been squared up with the lake, even what is that 72 no that's yeah 72 years later that i believe uh we would have been in compliance by luck so but uh i just think but uh uh so what's unique about it is just that all the building envelope that they have um that uh being it's built so long ago that uh it ended up where it was it was almost probably a win more than a detriment. That's all I'd like to add. And I think we can all say that Clint has OCD. <laughs> You're okay, Clint. Yep. You're okay. Okay, anybody else like to add to that? Practical difficulty? Well, I would just reiterate what Clint had said. Oh, this was built before, you know, the... Uh, we had the setbacks in place in the 1950s. And if I heard this correctly, only 10% of the building is in that. Does it meet setback? And, uh, you know, one thing huge in our eyes, it not being in a short impact zone. If it would have been within that 50 feet, uh, the, uh, it's pretty tough to approve something like this. But uh, being, you know, you're near that 75 in a new addition, it will all meet all setbacks. It... Uh, it makes it more unique, so thank you. Okay, nothing uh, to add to that. Number five, we ready for number five? 
is the need for the variance created by actions other than the landowner or prior landowners? Uh, I think we're starting out with you, Marv. Well, the need for the variance is because the cabin was placed at that time, which we didn't have a setbacks. And now what do you do? It, it's still in nice shape for its age. A lot of times you get a cabin that old is uh, quite dilapidated, so it was well taken care of. So it's not because of the uh, prior landowners or anything. It was because the county didn't have enforced the setbacks for that. And, and also reiterating that it is a conforming lot, which we have so many lots on ALEC that are non-conforming. So. Okay. Anybody like to add? Mr. Yeah, Chair? Go ahead. I think just, um, you know, where, when it was built, where it was built, um, considering 1950 uh, standards, um, they did a pretty good job of placing it on a lot uh, at that time. So uh, I think that's, um, you know, uh, the actions are by others, the builder that, that would have put it there, um, maybe was a prior landowner and maybe not the current landowner, but a prior landowner, but it may have been built by somebody else. And then as Clint had mentioned, how it was measured, where it was measured from at the time could have very easily affected the placement of that structure. Thank you. Anything else? Question number six. Um, does the alleged practical difficulty involve more than just economic considerations? Um, uh, Brent? Um, I'm gonna almost reiterate what I just said. Uh, it's unique uh, in this property. Again, where it's built, how it was measured, um, built in the 1950s, um, it, 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 there's many things that are affecting this that are um, not just economic considerations. Now that they're considering adding on to that structure, uh, obviously there's going to be costs associated with that, but um, there's other things that are unique to this situation uh, that make it uh, something coming before us tonight. Okay. Anybody else like to add to that? Go ahead, Dave. Here we come to economic considerations. You know, they're not saving money by doing it this way. There just are no other options. I mean, other than moving the house. Uh, so, you know, we talk about economic considerations. If there was some way they could do it differently, and it would cost a few more dollars, but there is, there is no other way to do it than this. So it does involve more than economic considerations on this point. Thank you. I'd like to add that the applicant did a good job of answering all the questions and hopefully our answers reflect what your answers were too. Your answer on this one was very good. Uh, That's some good help. <laughs> <laughs> yes, the request is due to logical placement of an addition onto existing <coughs> non-conforming structure. N any economic gain wasn't even part of our rationale in this application. Mr. Chair, I'd like to also add one thing. I, I appreciate them will, having the willingness to work with the storm water, water management plan to redirect the water to uh, that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, are we ready to a answer the questions? Okay, and we're answering questions based on what is the uh, condition that we came up with, Amy? Mr. Chair, what I had heard was that you were looking at possibly placing a condition that the um, that the applicant submit a stormwater management plan that would meet the approval of the land services department. Yes. Is that did I frame that correctly? If that works for them, it yes. works. Okay. I we think it works for us. That's what I heard out of my one good ear. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Am I sitting on it? You should never have your good ear towards a woman, though, you know? No, it's not this yeah. It's not good to bad. Uh, I didn't say that in public. Uh, all right, so we're ready for the questions. Um, is the request in harmony with the uh, general purposes intent of the Morrison County Land Use Ordinance and Comprehensive Plan? Brent. Um, I, I believe it is. Um, hang on here just a second. Um, Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Myself is yes. Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Mark? Yes. 
And is the applicant proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the land use ordinance? Uh, my self answer is yes. Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. Marv? Yes. And Brent? Yes. Number three, will the issuance of the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. Marv? Yes. Brent? Yes. And myself is yes. Is the alleged practical difficulty due to its circumstances unique to the property? Dave? Yes. Marv? Yes. Brent? Yes. Myself is yes. And Clint? Yes. Is the need for the variance uh, created by actions other than the landowner or prior landowners? Marv? Yes. Brent? Yes. Myself was yes. Clint? Yes. And Dave? Yes. Does the alleged practical difficulty involve more than just economic considerations? Brent? Yes. Uh, myself was yes. Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Marv? Yes. All the questions were answered in the affirmative. Is there a motion to... Except this. Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion with our one condition that we uh, approve this application for their uh, variance. Second that. Okay, is there any discussion on the motion? Okay, we'll proceed by voting. All in favor say aye. All opposed say nay. Uh, roll call vote. Marv? Aye. Brent? Aye. Myself is aye. Clint? Aye. And Dave? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. Good information. Uh, okay. Nice property. Yes. Best wishes. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, you, can, you can go ahead and apply for your permit whenever you're ready. You will need a current septic system inspection, but I'm assuming since you just bought the property, you probably have a current one on file, but we'll check it. Yes, then you're fine. Uh, and then the stormwater plan, and I will give you the contact information on who to work with in our office on that, okay? Thank you. That's fine. That's fine. Yep, you're welcome. Well, I was straight in the middle. Yep. Good luck. Any public input at all? Okay, you ready? Hmm. Okay. <laughs> We're ready for the next um, item on the agenda. Uh, Roger and Terry Polkamp, if you'd come forward, please. Um, 31808 18th uh, Avenue, uh, Cushing. Application for a variance to rebuild and add on to a non-conforming structure located in Scandi Valley Township on uh, Bishop Strap Lake. Your names for the record, please. Tara. Roger. Thank you. And the uh, staff report, please. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, this is a variance request to expand a dwelling within the setback to the road and lake located in section 30 of Scandia Valley Township. The ordinance references is section 301, 301.6, 706.1, and 706.3. And actually, I neglected to give you the uh, road setback one, so that ordinance section applies as well. Here's a plat map of Scandi Valley Township and the red dot is the location of the parcel. And then here's the variance request to receive from the applicant. And then here's a site drawing also provided by the applicant. And I believe this is a, a survey actually of the neighbor's property, but it um, at least defines the southern, southern line of the pole camp property. And then here is a site drawing also provided by the applicant. And an aerial photograph of the parcel outlined in blue. And then some oblique imagery of the parcel. And then also a photo from the lake. And then here are some site photos taken at the viewing on the 13th of May. Again, the property is in section 30 of Scandi Valley Township. It is on Fish Trap Lake, which is a general development lake. The property is oddly shaped and is a non-conforming single lot, which means it is less than 30,000 square feet and 120 feet wide. The property is 140 feet wide and 17,600 square feet. According to the assessor's records, the 760 square foot dwelling was built in 1930, and the dwelling is 43 feet from the lake. 
A variance was granted in May of 2017 to replace the existing 20 by 16 shed located 50 feet from the lake with a 20 by 16 shed with eight foot sidewalls and a pitched roof. And then here is that variance uh, uh, paperwork. According to Scandi Valley's recorded road orders, they claim a 66-foot road right-of-way on 18th Avenue. A compliant building envelope does not exist on the property. And then here is just with the measurements from the lake and from the road showing that there isn't anywhere where there's a compliant building envelope that meets all setbacks. The applicant has owned the property since 2012. The applicant is requesting a variance to replace the existing home with the same footprint size, but with a second story and a pitched roof. Overall height would be 23 and a half feet. The applicant is willing to move the home farther back from the lake and out of the shore impact zone. This will be a further encroachment on the setback from the road right of way. The township has provided a letter of approval to encroach into the setback from the road. And then here is the letter and the meeting minutes. The impervious surface is 19%, 25% uh, <coughs> impervious surface is allowed. At the development review team meeting, staff discussed the following with the applicant, uh, that they have the right to replace what they have in the same spot with a change in roof pitch that does not result in additional livable space without a variance. <coughs> if more livable space is desired, then uh, they should work to get the structure out of the shore impact zone uh, and that, but that would mean further encroachment on the setback from the township road right of way. And staff recommended a visit with Scandi Valley Township. Uh, expanding the home up versus out, and that dependent on where the structure is placed. A taller home will also affect the character of the locality in some cases, and building out would change the impervious surface calculation. The ability to keep the patio in front of the cabin as it was legally established prior to land use controls the ability to reconfigure the dwelling within the same footprint with no variance, and um, the property is served by a holding tank. The applicable comprehensive land use uh, plan goals are natural resources and open spaces, goal C2, shoreland development, goal D1. Then the applicable Morrison County comprehensive water plan goals and objectives is the surface water goal, objective B, land use and development goal, objectives B and D. 117 notices were sent. Uh, we did receive one phone call from Tim Daniels and he uh, stated that he is supportive of the application. Otherwise, we didn't receive any other correspondence. And then here you're finding a fact and decision questions, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you, Amy. Does the applicant have anything to add at this time? Okay, thank you. Uh, questions, anybody? Who would like to start? If nobody would like to start, I guess I'd like... <laughs> I'm not sure what that was about. Uh, a clarification on something. Um, could we go to the uh, survey? After the viewing, oh, speak of viewing, uh, we were on the property on the 13th, and uh, uh, and Clint, uh, myself, uh, Brent, Marv, and Sharon were there, and Dave? Today. Today, okay, so we all viewed the property. <clears throat> One second, I lost my connection, so I just need to, I just need to get it back here. I just need to get it back. Yeah. One moment here. That's what my night. grandkids say all the time. Roger, don't feel, you feel like I look when my wife's dealing with her lake home too, so. Oh. Let's see here. I just need to, I have got somebody on team, so I just need to. Be great, huh? Make sure. <laughs> Give me one moment here. It's fine right now, just wait until we go out there. <laughs> Yes, Tara did a good job of answering all our questions, uh, showing us around. 
Okay. Now we'll get to the survey. There we go. Okay. Yeah, as you pointed out in your um, staff report that that's a survey of the neighbor's property, correct? I don't know why that is either. Um, I went to Fessler, and I asked him if we needed any of that stuff, and he said no. So oh. I tried to. If You asked him if you needed a survey? Yeah, if I could get one printed off, and he didn't have anything, so... So this is the closest so he, he didn't had. have one of your property, I'm guessing. So he gave you for the neighbor. I had this, I think, I from the last variance. To be honest with you, yeah, I don't know. Uh -huh. Well, with with that in mind, maybe could we go to Beacon now that, and uh, mm -hmm. look at the property outline? And it became, you know, as I left the viewing and went back home and looked at the uh, at your application, it became pretty obvious that if you move the, the, the house 10 feet away from the lake that you're encroaching on the neighbor's property. It seems. No. no. Okay, well, maybe in Beacon we can figure that out. <laughs> That's why a good survey would have been helpful with flags and... Uh... Okay, Mr. Chair, there's the property. Do you want a different view? Um, perhaps you could measure from the... Um, from the back of the house to that, yes, that distance there. Yep. So it meets the 10 foot setback now. Moving it 10 feet would put it on your neighbor's property, if this is correct. And this is, seems to be correct. I if, mean, if so it probably saying, has to shift to the north, but. If we move straight back, we would, we would not be on our neighbor's property. Oh. And you know that how? Because me and Dave, the, the landowner next to us, walked that property line out, and it's the trees that run right in the middle, and we actually go, our property goes onto their driveway. Are there some markers, lands, yes. or survey markers? There's markers in, in, the, the ground. in the ground. That was surveyed a long time ago, as Dave told us, the neighbor okay. did. He says, we're driving on your land right now, and I said, I don't care if you don't. It's been mm -hmm. there for how many years, why? Yeah, so Chair. go ahead. Amy, can you go back to that previous Fessler? Because um, mm -hmm. I think the survey iron stakes are uh, marked in black, are they not? Right here. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So all the black dots are the iron monuments that were found by this survey. And then the ones that are open were set at that during that survey. So... So these, these were found, these were set, these open ones. Okay, how does that help us? Well, if you look at the... Those, those, those can be found in the field. So these are iron monuments that are in delineating. So if they know where those are, they know where their property line is. Okay. And you know it's how far from the cabin it's now? It's about 30 feet. But okay. now it's going to be down to 20 feet if we move it back 10 feet. Okay. Mr. Chair? Go ahead. So just again, looking at this, um, I don't know if you can see where I'm pointing on mine, but you can see oh. 30, 30, uh, 30 feet across here. That's an equal distance to the back of the cabin, so it appears as though the cabin is 30 feet from those that's survey pins. The neighbor's cabin. That's the neighbor's cabin. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the wrong one. Yes, yeah, so this one. You're on the right one, but you're right, right one. But their property is right here. So if we could maybe jog this back to Beacon. Busy. With that in mind. No, you you look at that. So the survey is of this property. Okay. And this is the structure so we're where. At 30 feet back from that, then it would be, as they stated. Mr. Chair, you can't go 100% by beacon either because if you look, that's the neighbor's cabins on their land. Oh, right. You know, so. Right, this whole thing needs to be shifted over. Mm hmm. Um, because according to the survey, this cabin, well, we don't have a measurement here, but this, this cabin is, um, you know, with, within their property and if we go back to beacon and another crooked property line yeah so the property line probably runs like right around here 
So mm -hmm. this whole thing gets shifted shifted over. Yeah, but so does that line. But so but beacon it, isn't we we tell people never ever 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 mm -hmm. use beacon to identify where your property lines are. We draw these in based off the legal description, but we're snapping that in based on how that fits mm -hmm. and with the section corner information that we have. We do have areas of the county where we do not have very good section corner information, and so that, so because of that, we have that issue. Also, uh, you're kind of taking a flat picture and essentially wrapping it around a globe, and so they're not mm -hmm. always going to match up. So mm -hmm. uh, sometimes our beacon images are not um, not representative of what's in the field, so we're always going to rely on irons in the field and or a survey to identify where those lines are. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, looking at, again, this blue boundary that's uh, on the map, and if it is at the back of the neighbor's house and it's supposed to be 30 feet over, then you would seem to be correct in the placement of the uh, stakes that you would have room to make that 10 foot jog. Okay. Uh, of course, if we base our decision on, on that information, right, that would be verified by land services. Uh, correct, when we field check the permit, we would be checking that. Okay, all right. We clear as mud on that. Clear enough. Okay. We just we just had a, <clears throat> a survey done on our property, our house property, David, and and Beacon did not correlate with that survey. So, I mean, uh, and the good thing about it was it was a property dispute, and our neighbor ordered the survey <laughs> <laughs> and paid for it. Yes. Oh. <laughs> I, I love it when I'm right. <laughs> okay, um, any other questions for the applicant? Mr. Chair, I have a few questions, and um, I imagine these will evolve a little bit. Uh, so, something that um, here, I, the shore impact zone is quite sensitive to all of us, and that's that first 50 feet. And I... Uh, before I think I could possibly vote yes in approval that uh, I would like to see the cabin move totally out of the shore impact zone so it would meet at least that 50-foot setback. Um, and we're backing it up 10 feet. That would bring that uh, 50 what feet or how many feet will that be out of the shore? It's 43 right now if we go 8 to 10. 10 it would be 51 so that would so you'd be uh, willing to do that uh, something else earlier uh, or Sharon Well, that's what we were wondering. Where is the property line? Okay, here I got something to add on the property line. So if it says here that this property is 140 feet wide, and it's 17,600 square feet, so that comes up with like 125 feet deep. If you take 125 feet times 140, you get 17,500 square feet. So if we're 43 feet away. From the lake, how long, how big's the cabin? How long is it? It is 44, I believe. 30. No, I got it on my phone here. My notes. Well, I suppose you could trace this whole boundary and measure it and see if it comes up with 16,000 or 17,000 square feet. See if it's all shrunk, which would have to be the case. I mean, I can see it being shifted south, but um, gosh. Normally, Beacon isn't all that far off on. What are you asking? <laughs> I'm not sure. I think Clint what, was what trying to, what, trying like, to what figure we, out if, how deep the property is. is. The length. Well, it's going to vary because... 1.4 is the width. Yeah. So yeah. it depends on where you're taking that measurement. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so that don't work right either because no. that'd give us 81 feet, and there's no way there's 81 feet behind the cabin, so. Nope. It just depends on where you're taking that yeah. measurement, so. It ain't square, so it ain't going to work the way my calculations so, were. That's and generally, why. we consider on a shoreline property, this is the front. Yeah. Front of the property, side. Yep. Yeah. And then we have the road. Um, we have this little piece here that could be considered rear or side. Um, you know, if we consider that a, a rear property line, then Sharon is right. It would be a 35-foot setback. Um, if, if we considered it a side property line, it would be a 10-foot setback. I'm inclined to call it a, a side property line because of the odd shape of the, of the piece of property. I'm for that. The so. the setback from the road is going to push it. You know, you're going to, regardless of where that goes, you're going to have that encroachment into the setback from the road right of way. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that, you know, regardless, you're going to have some encroachment there. Well, according to these measures you just did, it's only 90 foot deep at that part. I think at the deepest point, if I go, I mean, it really depends how, how I draw that. But this is the property line, but really we've got, but then we've got this road right of way and we've got a 30 foot setback from that. So when you draw that in, uh, you know, the depth at the deepest point, the depth really from the lake to, you know, I mean, it's 55 feet maybe if you have a compliant setback from the water. But it just depends on what you're doing. I don't, I'm not exactly sure what you're getting at. So. Okay, but you had measured from the lake across the cabin to the mm -hmm. side yard, and that was only 90 feet. To where? From here to here. From the lake. From here to here? To, yeah. 95 feet. Mm -hmm. So 50 foot of, um, of uh, lake shore impact zone is what they're proposing, mm -hmm. plus 40 foot of house, is it? Real right. close. Okay, yep. it's 90 feet. Got uh, it. Yeah. So, yep, so that puts you about so four either feet. Either this is way off, or this is way off, or something's way off. Yep, and I think that that's something that, you know, we just have to find those pins in, in I mean, we rely on the property owner to know where their property line mm -hmm. is and to identify where it is. If it's this close, we'll either rely on, they'll, they'll need to identify where those pins are and we'll take our measures there, or they'll need to get a survey. So can we proceed with this meeting and our decision based on the fact that they are far enough back to meet the side yard setback? It would be assumed, the thing is, is if, if we get, if, if, if you put a condition on that they need to be 50 feet from the water and we go to permit and, and then they're, they're in, the yeah, and they're encroaching on that, then they're gonna either need to revamp their plan uh -huh. or they're gonna have to come in for another variance because it wasn't advertised for a side that's, property line setback. That's fair in my opinion. Okay. It, we, can we stay where we're at and not have to do that 50 foot? I mean, then we wouldn't need a variance because we are... Rebuild exactly what you have. But the roof pitch, that doesn't yep. work in Minnesota. You can, ch you can change the roof pitch without a variance. That's so, We had discussed so, that in the dirt meeting, but yeah. you can't have any gain in li livable space. You can't go up that second story that you want to do. You, you have the right to replace exactly what you've always had, and you can change the pitch of that roof as long as you don't have a gain in livable space. Can they increase to pitch sidewall the roof. height? Right. Yes, but it can't, it can't result in a loft. It can't result in any livable space. And so at the dirt meeting, in discussing that, they wanted that second story, that they wanted that loft space. Right. So that's why we're here <coughs> for a variance. Mm -hmm. Okay, another thought that if this is true, I, I, I'm not sure if it is, but you could reorient the, uh, the cabin, you know, and. Uh, make it parallel to the lake rather than perpendicular to the lake and uh, get, get rid of your storage structure and put it in the space of those two buildings and possibly meet the side yard setback and the 50 foot impact zone and don't, and, and you wouldn't encroach any further road. on the right of way. I'm gonna get way too close to the tar road. I switch it. 
Is they're okay with the um, the accessory structure where it is now? But the lot goes skinny, skinny, skinny. It's wider where the cabin is, and then it gets yeah. thin. Yeah. So That's then you're going to be right out there. I mean, so if you just reorient it, it and made it narrower. Some, I don't think you can go that way because you're going to yeah. be maybe. Well, the snow plows hit roughly uh, cabin. fifteen, maybe ten feet away from the tar road, and then plus our septic tank is there then. Yeah. No, I'm just thinking, rotate it 90 degrees. Yeah, but I know what you're saying, but our, and our house is going to be, you know, 30-some feet long instead of 20 feet long. You know what I'm trying to say? Because you're moving it, and it's going to be going closer, way closer to the tar road. But it'd be taking up the footprint of the present house and the storage structure, wouldn't it? Yeah, but then we have to go back oh, to them but guys and get to the... but it's 10 feet wider than the storage structure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I don't know if you could meet the 50-foot shore impact zone and... The current side back from the road. Be. David, can we uh, can we move forward with the original plan then? And that if they can't meet that, uh, then they either have to come back, redo the plan, or come back for a variance. If if that doesn't, what we discussed about the coming closer to the property line or the road there, can we go yeah. with the original plan and we have can. that as a condition? So now you're saying like the back of our house has got to be 35 feet away from the other property? No. No, ten. ten from the back side. Correct. Over twenty feet over. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. fine. Okay. Uh, All right. I think we should proceed with that. I mean, I'm sorry if I'm out of turn. No, here. no, I, okay? I think we have to proceed on something. Okay, I'm. Thank you very much. Yeah, I was just wondering if you wanted to rethink, come back. This is it. No. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, go ahead, and Marv. I, I have one more condition or a couple more conditions that I was thinking about here, and. You know, one thing, um, I'm a real stickler about impervious surface, and I talk about our resources in Morrison County, and Fish Trap also a beautiful lake, and you want to keep that way. I know you have the right to keep the patio, uh, what you have, the pavers, and saying you're, you, uh, you use that, you utilize that, you have that right, what, uh, what I heard in the minutes. But uh, if there's a possibility and exchange a nexus being that you have uh, from your home, your, your walkout, uh, a sidewalk uh, giving you access to the lake so you wouldn't be dragging anything in there and removing the patio that you have and lowering your impervious surface. And, uh, and also with that, would, on the same uh, page would be have a storm water management plan and here uh, uh, coming with possibly guttering and it looks like your uh, place is kind of tapered away from the lake which is a good thing to absorb that water before it would go to the lake. <clears throat> okay. Any other input? Questions? Okay, we'll uh, open the meeting up for public input at this time. Is there any public input? Anybody like to make a comment on this, for or against? Any comments from the public? Pretty small public out there. <laughs> any comments from the public? Okay, I've asked three times, so there's no comments, so we'll close the uh, meeting to public input. All right, um, we're ready for the questions then. Okay. Mr. Chair, are we going to talk about conditions before the... Uh, <coughs> I, th I think that would be wise because um, I, I like to answer the questions based on conditions. I think that's important. And what are you proposing for conditions, Marv? Well, the one condition we talked about, I talked about is uh, earlier, and they agreed to it, is that uh, home our cabin would be at least 50 feet away from the lake, uh, so it w wouldn't be in the shore impact zone. Uh, the next condition I talked about is having a storm water management plan uh, with uh, um, our specialists would his re follow his recommendations would be. And uh, the other one, uh, we didn't discuss. I wanted input for others, possibly of removing the pavers and lowering the impervious surface. Uh, and uh, that's, 
I thought uh, it was an opportunity for some discussion. I don't know if we need any discussion. Uh, what are your thoughts, Mr. Chair? When we were out at the viewing, uh, Tara and I had a discussion on that, and I asked her to think about removing the patio and um, just replacing it with just a walkway from the uh, new cabin entrance down to the, uh, to the dock. And she said she'd think about that. What have you th been thinking? Depends on how the rest of it goes, I guess. <laughs> you know, I mean, if we get rid of our patio, which is, we do a lot with that, and then we put a big gap in there and have to move ten back, back 10 feet, I guess I'd like to see where the cabin's going to go first before I make any decisions as mm. far as that goes. Okay. I like her. Excuse I think me? her point is well taken. Yeah. I'd like to see that as a condition myself, removing the patio from the shore impact zone. Mr. Chair, and also you would be able to have a sidewalk where you would have, uh, you know, I don't know if Sir Amy is there with uh, how wide that sidewalk can be, three feet, or is... Uh, we allow stairways, lifts, and landings within the shore impact zone, uh, and we allow mobility paths. So um, generally, if, you know, it, it's, it's about safely getting yourself to the lake. So generally a sidewalk, you know, going straight from the cabin to the lake isn't something we typically permit um, unless it's under, you know, a mobility path or a handicap accessibility type of thing. Um, so we'd have to work with the property owner on what that would look like um, if that, I'm not, that's not typically what we permit. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chair, Go ahead. I have a comment to make here. So you guys can think about this while you're voting. You know, we have a lot of these meetings and we got a lot of stuff that's in the shore impact zone and things like that. And, and Dave, you're pretty big on let's just move the cabin all the time. <laughs> and here we got somebody that's willing to move the cabin back to get out of the shore impact zone the township's willing to give up some of the road right away. I, I think by them going back, it's a win. How many times do we get to move a structure out of the shore impact zone? If this house, they could just build it the way it is right now, brand new. And then if it's brand new, how old's this cabin now, 80 years old? The new one will be there for another 80, 90 years in the shore impact zone. So... I'm, I'm for some of the um, conditions you're talking, but let's not over condition it that that we can't. Uh, I think it's a win just to get a lot of the shore impact zone. So, just my thought. You guys, something to think about. Okay, thank you. Are you ready for the questions then? Okay, number one. Is the request in harmony with the general purposes and intent of the Morrison Land? Morrison County Land Use Ordinance and Comprehensive Plan. Did we start out with you, Brent, last time? <clears throat> yeah. I guess it's my turn then. Um, there is no <laughs> building envelope on this property. There is no square foot of this property that meets all the setbacks. Um, it's about as non-conforming as, as it gets. Um, Yes, I like the idea of the cabin being moved out of the uh, shore impact zone. Um, it's a very small property without a building envelope, with meets no setbacks anywhere. Um, one thing it's got going for is 140 feet of shoreline, which is very nice shoreline, um, well taken care of. Um, but this is adding a second story. This is adding uh, more concentrated use on the property. Uh, it's, ex again, expanding a nonconformity. It's not getting rid of a nonconformity. Um, it's moving it back 10 feet. That's a little bit of a, a win. In this case, you know, the, um, that 40 feet of shoreline isn't a very impactful area other than the fact that it's got a patio in it. Um, and a lot of impervious service there right next to the lake, and that seems to me like it would all run into the lake. Uh, the uh, lake 
the contour of that property is such that I think everything from the cabin runs towards the road or at least ponds towards the road and not towards the lake. That's, that's very good. That's a plus. But um, by adding a second story, by continuing the use of the uh, storage uh, or the accessory structure as primarily living space, um, this is a gross overuse of the property, I think. Um, if the um, applicant were to come up with a more conservative plan, maybe two stories without the storage structure, I think I could sign on, but not the way it's presented today. Um, does not is not in harmony with the uh, general purposes and intent of the land use ordinance, which is to, um, you know, conservation of natural resources, preserving the shoreline and the look of the shoreline. Uh, the two-story structure is much more imposing than a one-story structure. Um, even that um, utility shed that we um, permitted five years ago, you know, I, I didn't realize the impact that would have just on adding a couple of feet to the sidewalls and adding a pitched roof. That's a, <laughs> it looks like a big structure on that little property. Now, a, a two-story house right next to it, you know, if they were proposing something else, like I said, um, a different configuration, maybe smaller, maybe two stories without the uh, uh, storage structure, living area, it might meet the intent of the ordinance. Okay, Much so better would. We have to go. Uh, no comments. I'm oh, please. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's just my opinion. Okay. Anybody else like to add to that, Mr. Chair? Go ahead. I'll have to kind of disagree somewhat. I agree with some of your statement, but, um, you know, like you stated that uh, it's going to be hard for it to meet all the setbacks and things there. And and uh, I think, uh, you know, in our intent and purposes, we try to make things compliant. And there's no way we'd make this, this lot compliant. Um, I think... We can all agree probably the number one thing on the river and lakes is the shore impact zone. And I think by moving a structure back so they're at least out of the shore impact zone, you say that by putting another story that it's just overuse of it, yeah, maybe they'll use it more, but it don't add no impervious surface or any of that by going up. It's still the same square footage as far as the imprint. Um, I just look at the benefits of getting them moved out of the shore impact zone. And if we do nothing, they could just build um, right where they are, just the way it is, and we didn't get nothing. So I look at it as it's somewhat um, in harmony with some of the purposes that we're looking at. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Amy, I've, uh, if I heard correctly, was there like 112 notices? How many notices were sent again? 117. 117, so it was off there. And with no objections, well, that doesn't make it that it's in harmony, but it, me it means that, okay, the neighbors are, are fine with this here, which <laughs> is a good thing. But, um, you know, as... Dave was stating here about the piece of property and the building envelope. We've ran into this before. And I was reading uh, before when that additional structure was allowed and why it was allowed, what it was on skids with the intent that someday we may want to build a cabin. And here you want to keep this and here you have no building envelope. Uh, so what do you do? And uh, at that time, the way I read it, understood it, is why it was approved that, okay, when you get to the point where you're going to build a cabin, that would be removed and it would f fulfill that, if I read it correctly. Uh, but uh, here what would help, you know, matters, you know, Part of this, uh, removing the patio, lowering the impervious surface. But uh, here, it's almost too much for that property, uh, what I'm seeing if we allow this.
Any other uh, input on question number one? <coughs> Go ahead, Dave. Well, you know, I, it's nice to have varying viewpoints here. Yours, David, and then Clint made some good points too. Uh, I think that, you know, in this case here, we they've made an effort to compromise and they've got the township as like uh, Clint said, we really don't have a lot of choice here if we're either gonna let them do something or we're not. And and the options and what if, if we don't, tell them they can't do anything. Uh, I think that Clint's option, what the points he made makes sense. Uh, I think, you know, we've got just got a limited number of options as a board here. And I think that Clint's option makes the most sense. And I think that it is in harmony, you know, considering all the other, um, you know, I drove up and down that na that road there and uh, it's in harmony with, pardon me? There's a lot of close houses there. Um, no, 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 but anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying no. But uh, so, I mean, I wanna say that I appreciate what your points are, Dave, but in this case, I have to th agree with, with Clint's points. So thank you. <clears throat> other other input? Brent? Ken? Nothing further. Okay, ready for question number two. Is the applicant proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the land use ordinance? Clint? Um, you know, we discussed a lot where there is no building envelope here and uh, um, you know, for this application to get a variance, I think it's uh, it's they're proposing you know to use it reasonable. Um, they can rebuild where they are; nothing would change. Um, they're talking it's going to be the same square footage, other than maybe they'll go up a story or whatever their proposal is. Um, and and I'm always I know some are against height and all this stuff, but. If you look in the in the area, I mean, just I had my notes here in the um, the immediate uh, proximity of their their cabin. You know, there's some two story homes there, and uh, I, I think that would fit right in. Um, yes, I know they got a small w uh, building envelope there, basically none. But uh, I do think it's reasonable for what they're asking because they're not going to make it any bigger, really. There might be more livable space, but the footprint isn't going to be any bigger. Um, and I think it's just reasonable that they're moving it farther away from the lake. So that's, uh, that's uh, my reasoning for it. Okay, thank you, Clint. Anybody else? Mr. Chair, uh, I, I think it's quite obvious the cabin is in very poor condition and you need to do something. Um, what is the best step? I don't know. I'm not the expert with that. Um, here, uh, one thing uh, there uh, that will help limit you to size is the holding tank because it's in no septic over there. So that's a plus on our side that way but you know is it reasonable to have um, a building that size in no building envelope I don't know I can't give a real good answer to that one uh, as I think it's reasonable uh, going back and being out of shore impact which uh, helps me to possibly vote in, in uh, affirmative in that respect. Thank you, Marv. Uh, anybody else? Um, I was on the board five years ago when the uh, storage structure was approved, as it is now. Um, and... Uh, my recollection of that was it was an intermediate thing. You knew that the cabin was going to need replacing at some point. And then 
as I recall the discussion, you might recall it differently, it was, well, this will tide us over until then as an accessory structure. It looks like it's being used a lot for personal use, but I guess that is allowed. Uh, I think it was sold to us as an accessory structure, though, rather than that, um, just for storage. Um, and we assumed this day would come, and it has. And the storage structure would go, and something more appropriate would replace it, um, something that fits the property. Again, you know, just looking at Beacon, there, there's, there's not much property there, and it's in such an odd shape that it's only so much you can do with it and not encroach too much on the lake or the neighbors or the right-of-way. You will encroach, but not. There is no, you know, Clint, you point out, if you look at 50 feet as, you know, the shore impact zone as the setback, then you have a slight building envelope. But remember, 75 feet is the county setback. That's what the ordinance is requiring. Uh, we go down to 50 feet when there are practical difficulties. And there are practical difficulties here, the shape of the property, definitely. But that, you know, um, to include the storage structure, to include the patio, to include a second story, too much, not a reasonable use for this small property without a building envelope. Anything else on number two? Ready for number three then? Will the issuance of the variance maintain the essential character of the locality? Dave? <clears throat> yes. Uh, you know, I drove up and down that road, and, uh, you know, that's just a kind of a real unique neighborhood there. Uh, and so what they're proposing to do uh, would not only, I think, not only maintain the essential character but in, if I might say improve it, um, you know, I think that I think that it would maintain the essential character of that locality. You sent again. You sent out uh, 117 letters and not one ob objection to it. So I would say that if uh, you know the people that live up there probably care about the character of their neighborhood as much as we could possibly do. So yes. It does maintain the essential character of the locality. Okay. Anybody else? Um, Mr. Chair. Go ahead, Marv. Um, it will fit in quite well with the rest of the... You, you drive up and down there. You go from the lakeside and what the rest of them are like. You know, uh, you wouldn't even probably notice it would be uh, with that. Other than possibly the height in overshadowing the next door neighbor. Uh, that close to the road, that that may be an issue, but I, I don't think it would be a huge issue. Okay, anybody else? Essential character? Uh, I disagree with that. I uh, have to disagree with that, that um, we know things that the 117 don't know. We know where the right of way of the road is. We know where the shoreline is. Uh, uh, we know where the neighbor's side yard is. Uh, and um, will, that, will that be apparent by, apparent by a drive-by or by a float-by? I think it will because of the size of the, of the, um, of the house that they're proposing. Um, and the storage structure right next to it. Uh, it'll be a clear overuse of the property. It'll be a lot of stuff concentrated in a very small area, very close to the road. Um, and that may be the essential character up and down the road to a certain extent, but this one is, um, in my opinion, the biggest abuse of, of, of those that essentiality of that character, uh, of that neighborhood. Too much, a little too much. Other thoughts on number three? Then number four, is alleged practical difficulty due to circumstances unique to the property? Marv. 
Well, what makes it very unique is no building envelope. A hundred and, what did he say, 40 feet of shoreline like that? I mean, which is huge. A lot of these only have 50 feet. But, you know, it's quite narrow. But uh, it, it's really uh, no, no building envelope. And that cabin was placed when there was no setbacks, obviously, back then. So uh, you do have definitely some real practical difficulties here. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, I <laughs> just, I agree, you know, it's a very unique property. It's, there's no place to put anything without uh, a variance. Um, does that make it unique enough for us to allow this much development of that small property? I don't think so. The practical difficulty isn't great enough to allow what they're proposing, which is keeping the patio, keeping the storage shed, adding a two-story structure. And we're not even certain <coughs> where the boundaries are, but that will be ironed out, could be ironed out. Okay, any other thoughts on number four? Number five is the need for the variance created by actions other than the landowner or prior landowners. Brent. Um, well, I think it is. You know, it's uh, it's 140 feet of lakeshore, um, but it's only got 17,600 square feet of uh, uh, property there. Um, that lot was subdivided, obviously, sometime long ago, maybe even as far as 1930. Um, What's, uh, what's also unique is the road in back. Um, you know, actions created, the, the road comes through with a 60 foot, uh, 66 foot uh, road right away. Some uh, might think that that's uh, a pretty big area for, for that small of a road, but nonetheless, it is what it is. Um, there's, um, we keep talking about this building envelope. Uh, well, while there's not a building envelope, there is a building envelope. Uh, the building envelope is the existing structure. You can rebuild that existing structure right where it is. So um, uh, we do have that as well. Um, uh, so um, has, has something been created by uh, the prior landowners or, or created by somebody other than the prior landowners or the landowners? I would say yes, it is because uh, just the mere fact that it, uh, it, it was a developed lot and it was built on and somebody did that. So um, other people were involved many years ago. Okay. Anybody else like to add to that? Number six, does the alleged practical difficulty involve more than just economic considerations? <clears throat> oh, sure. <laughs> We've been talking for an hour <laughs> on uh, considerations. All of those. Do you have them all marked down? <laughs> uh, it's, it's more than about money, but it's, you know, Maybe you want too much for what this property can support. I, that's my belief. So a different property, oh. then it is all about money. <coughs> if you want what you want where, on what you've got versus getting something more appropriate to meet your needs, then it is all about money. All right, answers uh, to number six, any more? Uh, Mr. Chair, uh, I don't believe it's all about money. I mean, uh, but there, there's obviously economic reasons behind it. I do agree with your statement uh, when you said trying to put too much in a piece of property. Uh, and the way I want to want to reiterate is, I, I don't know if this is going to pass, but I get a feeling it isn't going to fly. And I believe that if they came back with some things of possibly getting rid of are doing things uh, to change it slightly, it may fly at that time. But with this here, it's just uh, it's just a, uh, 
trying to do too much in too small of a piece of property. Beautiful shoreline, you know, it looking like it's well taken care of that way. Cabin, obviously something needs to get done there. But you're thinking about a lot of things, and I don't blame you trying to do um, do what you're trying to do here. Uh, I would do the same thing. Okay, any other thoughts on number six? Uh, Mr. Chair, I'd just add that um, it, it does involve more than just economic considerations. They are looking at rebuilding it and putting some money into new constructions, uh, obviously there. Uh, and they can do that with the existing structure and footprint that exists. Uh, so there is the rebuild that, that is economic. But there are other issues here uh, with that odd-shaped lot. Uh, the way it was created laid between the lake uh, and the road. Uh, obviously, the road came secondary to the lake, <laughs> uh, which probably uh, created some uh, of this difficulty we're dealing with now. Um, that road and back curves. Um, you got the water on the front side, you got the road on the rear side, you got the right of way of the roadway. Uh, there's many things that are involved here beyond economic considerations of what they're planning to do. Okay, thank you. Other thoughts on number six? So we're ready for the questions. Mr. Chair, Go ahead, just a little bit confused, I'd like to, for you to clarify you talk about overbuilding on this property. So where I'm confused is if we if we don't allow this and they can build this structure right where it is the same size, how is that any different than moving it back? Okay. That would be a one-story structure versus a two-story structure. That's double the structure that they're proposing. I see it to be the lesser of the two evils, to have it in the same spot that it is, close to the shoreline. 10 feet farther back would be nice, but um, again, with the uh, storage facility, that's a large storage facility, um, and, um, you know, and the patio staying there, you don't gain anything by this patio staying there. Um, they, I don't think they've come up with an argument that says moving the cabin back is better. In fact, it compounds the problems of the, of the property. That's, did that clarify my, my thoughts? Yeah. You look at development different than I do, so that's just and, uh, that's fine. I just wanted to clarify. Dave, do you have anything to add? Oh, I don't know. I think that they came in here with a plan to compromise, and I just wonder if we <clears throat> are overthinking this as a board and really, you know, uh, go so far as to, you know, how much authority do we really want to exert here, you know, is that for the sake of authority? Is this really something that's good, or are we just proving a point here? Um, I think that their plan is good, and and I mean that in all respect. Um, but uh, I think uh, that uh, you know this is kind of answers all the questions. And you go back to the you know, most important. You said the first question, but um, I think they've got a decent plan here, and. You know, to, to address the alternative that they should abandon the property and go buy something else, I don't even think that should be brought up. Uh, I mean that respectfully. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Chair. Yes. We've probably got to talk about some conditions. So yep. I think I'm, I'm going to ask you what condition, if there is a condition we could put on that would change your mind? Um, <laughs> remove uh, the storage structure, downsize it to a simple storage structure for lawn equipment, whatever. Remove the patio. Replace that with 
just a, a walkway down to the dock. Um, and then you're a 50 foot setback, 53 foot setback from the lake on the new proposed uh, two story house. I think that would be a reasonable use of the property. I think that would be in harmony with the intent of the ordinance. Mr. Chair, can I ask you another question? Can I ask you another question? Me personally? Yes. I'm here until midnight. If you well, because you're making these conditions, so I just so you said reduce the size of the storage structure. So could you clarify that a little better for? What size is the structure now? Fifteen by twenty. Same as what it was when we applied for the variance. Sixteen by twenty. Right here. It's exactly what we had. We rebuilt. Sixteen. Twenty by minus, sixteen. It was a flat roof at that point. Yeah. It had, Shorter side walls by far. It was a flat roof. It was not. There was a peak on it at one point, and when we ripped it apart, it was like four pieces built together, mm -hmm. and that's what we saw when we bought it. Was that size? Yeah. Yeah. Never in thoughts of having to leave our lawnmower <coughs> sitting outside, leave all of our fishing poles sitting outside, leaving everything turned into a junkyard. That wasn't mm -hmm. our intentions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think a small 10 by 10, six, seven foot sidewalls. Where does where our previous, yep. I guess we can't talk, huh? Yeah, well, <laughs> maybe at some point um, between the board members right now. And wives, they get to talk all the time. <laughs> I believe the impervious <laughs> surface is like 19 point some percent. Yep. Okay, then Dave, Mr. Chair, so if we'd remove the patio, would you allow a walkway down to the? Oh yeah, that's that's permittable. Over the counter permittable. And and very reasonable. <clears throat> All right, so where are we at? So, Mr. Chair, before we proceed to uh, voting on these questions, are we uh, are we able to confirm? And maybe we need to confirm this with uh, applicants if they're willing to uh, agree to further conditions that have been discussed by the board up here prior to a vote, uh, or maybe you just want us to vote. Uh, that would be a reasonable thing to ask the applicants. No, yes. What is your conditions? There's two that want something, the other yeah. two want something different, and I don't know about the third guy. So how do we know what you want? Mr. Chair? What I have written down is earlier in the discussion um, that possible condition would be that the cabin be located at least 50 feet from the lake, that a stormwater management plan be developed and implemented, uh, and then the last two pieces um, that we just talked about was removal of the patio and then downsizing the accessory structure. And I would, you'd probably want to give a dimension on that, but those are the four that I, that I heard that I made note of. I believe I'm the only one that stated those four. All four of those would be required for me to vote yes on some or all of these questions as it stands right now without with just the 50 foot setback and the stormwater plan, um, I would vote no on every question. So you can roll the dice and find out where you come out or and come back with so a different plan. No. Mr. Chair? Can you guys yep. three rules, two no? Mr. Chair, I'll explain. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so all of the questions need to be answered in the majority yes in order to grant the variance so they can vote have a three to two vote and still pass that question. Um, I think it, as you're voting, if you're voting a particular way with a condition in mind, then you need to make sure that you state that on the record, that I am voting this way because of this condition. When you go through and answer those questions, if they're answered in the majority, yes, but you shake out that you're not going to have those conditions, then that may change someone's vote to a no on that because those conditions aren't sticking. 
So that's what you need to keep in mind. I don't think you can guarantee, yep, I'm going to vote this way if all of these conditions are met because that's not the process. No. Um, you, you each vote your own way, but you need to qualify that. If, if on its face you would not vote yes, you need to qualify why you are voting yes if, it, if it's tied to a condition. And then when it comes down to the final vote, then, then that's where you would maybe not pass it because of that. <coughs> okay, did that help clarify that? Okay, one more question. I got 25% or only a 19% previous. Pervious. Pervious. Impervious surface. So I could put another 6% on that place if I don't even build, you know what I mean? Correct? So one of the things, there's a couple things we look at, yes, 25% overall impervious surface. However, most things do need to meet setback in order to do it. So we pay attention to both. So, so yes, you have available impervious surface. However, almost all of it's parked. All of it is parked within the setback to the lake. So the impact of your impervious surface, even though it's under the 25%, the impact of the, of the impervious surface to the resource is greater because you don't have the protection of the setback between the structure and the lake. So that's where you, could, you can still have under, under the 25% impervious surface, but your impervious surface may be more impactful than someone who has uh, everything meeting setback and at the 25% because there's more buffer room between the structure and the lake to provide for that water to go down the landscape rather than across. And what things are, would be permittable? So other, not, other than what no impervious required. surface is allowed within the shore impact zones. For, so that first 50 feet, no impervious surface is allowed. It's not permitted. Uh, so your impervious surface, and then the only thing we allow between the 50, between 50 and 75 is a patio. Everything else must meet that 75 foot setback. So when we look at your lot, um, your patio, if you were to come in and permit that today, fresh, without any pre-existing rights, your patio would need to be 50 feet from the lake. And then anything else that was put on there would need to be 75 feet from the lake. So Amy, it's kind of confusing to me because um, at the, here, I thought you're allowed access to the lake, and then here that would be considered a sidewalk is impervious surface. Stairway lift or landing. Yeah. So when you have like a slope to your land and you need stairway, a stairs to get down, a lift to get down, or if you have mobility issues, we will allow a path or access. People don't necessarily have to have a paved path on a flat piece of property to the lake. And so that's where, where that's when we're looking at some of those um, allowances within the ordinance to allow people access to the lake. So they're not allowed to put a sidewalk? Not a, a, pay, a paved patio. They could do a P-Rock with, with no, um, with no, um, landscaping fabric underneath because that's not considered impervious. So that's why we, when someone wants a, a defined path to the lake, we need to look at what's going on, why they need it, and how they're going to construct it. It's always best when adding impervious surface or any structure to go through land services to make sure that it's permittable. Uh, I believe that they need some type of access to get there rather than dragging some dirt back and forth and everything else. So I don't know. Oh. That's not under the purview of a variance. It's nothing you need to approve yeah. or have to approve. It's something we would work with the property owner on. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mr. Chair, you also talked about um, downsizing that building. Do you have a size in mind here to possibly you? Yeah. It's too late at night to be thinking about plans other than theirs. Okay. So I think that's where we're at, waiting for what their wishes are. 
if you want us to proceed with answering the questions, we can do that. So you're saying we have to get rid of our patio? Our that's shed? Up, that's up to you. No, this is what you're going to vote on right now, correct? Yes, we're all individually going to vote, yes. I, I, just for clarification for the applicants here, I think we're, we're about to vote on the uh, criteria questions, but prior to voting those on those questions. criteria questions, um, we're, we're going to have uh, in mind some of these conditions, if they're going to be placed on there or not, or if you are, had an opportunity to listen to all the discussion up here tonight, if you're interested in uh, agreeing to those conditions before we vote. Um, and it may make a difference in how somebody votes. Yeah, you've got four, four conditions, correct? Possible four, conditions. Four possible conditions that you... I guess we were asking you if, how many of those are, are you, you agreeable, agreeable to? to? That's what... Prior, then, then we can, prior pro, to then we can vote. I don't have an issue backing that patio up and Louis losing a little bit of that. I mean, if that's going to make things better. What are the dimensions of the patio now? Do you know? That's it's, been there forever, too. Uh, it's pretty big. Well, your impervious surface count probably shows it. Let 16 me square. Grab that. Mm -hmm. 16 by 16. 16. But we had no intentions of. I patio. Mean, we, went, we came for a variance for that shed when we did that five years ago with no intentions of. I mean, I think you wanted that to be gone. But well, five years ago, I, I thought that was the intention. That's why it was put on skids, so that it could be. And that was your wishes, and that was your thoughts. There was cement underneath yep. the other one, and we yeah. put wood underneath there to make you happy. Okay. <laughs> the, eight, the patio is 18 by 18, according to the impervious surface calc. So you're proposing we would be to remove to, the patio? To, to, not to remove it, no. To no. lessen it. I mean, obviously, we're going to need something it there. The house, put it up tight against the building. I don't know if that's allowable, is it? So the replacement right is what they have where it is. So moving it, moving it back, um, you know, that, that you get what you've always had where you had it. And so butting that up to the house, and I think Sharon had explained that to the property owners out on site, too. So, are you so, the, saying no? so the patio would, would not, if the house moves back, there will be a gap oh. between, does that make? The patio can't move with the house. Correct, okay. yes. But could you do half? Could you move it back, though? Why can't you move it back? Mm -hmm. Get it away from the lake. I thought that's what you guys wanted, get it away from the lake. it's a short impact, so once you move it, it's subject to the shore impact rules. But if we leave it alone, it's way in the shore. Mm -hmm. You have it right, impact everything you've zone. got right now with a new roof. <coughs> Which, yeah. I'm very confused, I, I feel. Well, what's the difference? We're just making it the same. We ain't even going wider, longer. It's all we want to go up a little higher and have a little bit, you know, more room for the kids to play around. Mr. Chairman. Oh, where are we at? Go ahead, Dave. Okay, uh, is it, I'm just, I'm really trying to hold on to this whole train of thought here too. Yeah, okay? it's getting hard to hold on okay, to. Okay, anyway, and, and the, what I understood, and, and believe me, I've misunderstood things before, okay, but is that they move the house back 10 feet, they take that patio that's there, and they move that back with the house 10 feet, and they give half of it away is what I kind of understood here. But, uh, so I don't know, we're getting into some, Brent, you had some, you kind of. Yeah, that, well, we just went through that. Yep. Well, I'm glad that's not, clear. It's not, you can't do that. No, you can, you can keep the patio where the patio is right now in the exact. They move the house back 10 feet. Then there's a gap between it. You there's can't a gap just and they can't it. do anything with that gap. No, you don't get more patio. Yeah, well, I mean, if they gave up the, the patio that was there, yeah, it gets. They couldn't put a patio on the front. That, <laughs> that's, and that, because it's all in the that patio that's there. It could stay right where it is. So. And that, well, that's, that is the nonconformity rule by design. You get what you've always had. 
if, if it doesn't work for you, you're, you get what you've always had. When you change it, when you move it, so there is now, no, we're, now we're applying today's rules. Yeah, okay, I understand to that. that. What I'm saying is there's no opportunity for us as a board to allow that as a variance. We didn't advertise it. Okay. It wasn't a part of the request. Okay. Uh, and so that's something that we can't address today. Okay. Okay. Point well taken. Thanks for clarifying that. Clear? So if we were to give up part of the, the patio, we could, so, okay, say, Amy, it's 20 feet, okay? If we took the first 20 feet off by the shore mm -hmm. and kept that other 10, we can't do that? Like, if we your, shave it in half? Your, your patio is where your patio is. Yeah. You yeah. can reduce the size, but it's going to be right there. Okay. Where it always has. Could we put pavers in the middle there? You can do, do a walk, you like walking, you know, stepping stones or something to it. To connect it. Mm-hmm. We'd allow a stepping stone, you know, stepping stone path. Bigfoot feet. Yeah. <laughs> or like the pavers that the patio's made out of now. Could you... When you... So you walk a very, very, very fine line because then, then, when then we get into your pathways and all of that. Um, I don't want to make a decision on this tonight, to be honest with you, as far as what I'll allow as a path. I need to see it, and I need to look about it, and I need to look at the ordinance. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to promise a, a paved path to a non-conforming patio to bridge the gap. What I can tell you tonight is a stepping stone path is fine. If they want something else, I'll need to work with the property owner offline. So, so say what are half you these questions, you guys say no, and half you say yes. What happens then? You uh, either accept it as as uh, I mean, if yeah, if we say no to any one of the questions, your variance is denied. Okay, then you have the right That's to come back. That's got to be three out of two, correct? If you we say yeah, three out of two to any one of the questions. Yep. If we deny or yeah, if we say no to any one of the questions, your variance will be denied. Okay then you have the right to come back with a different proposal or you have the right to replace what you've got. Yeah, we can just stay real close to the lake then. Our patio will stay right there and the house will stay right there. Yeah. What One is, story. What is the height, what is the pitch that we could do without a variance on the roof if we left it as is? Without moving it, keeping our structure the yeah. same size, what could we do you, to make that better? You can't exceed 25 feet. Oh, you won't even let us go up and two stories. Why would it? We're going to go 25 feet straight up in the air. Let me finish. Okay, sorry. <laughs> you can't exceed 25 feet. So, so, you know, if you have a vaulted ceiling or something like that, you know, that, that's not a gain in livable space. But most people, if they're going to go up with their roof, the, the intent of that was to, ha to pitch your roof when you had a flat roof. It, it, the, the intent of that portion of the ordinance was not to allow livable space, was not to allow a huge change. So a negligible change in sidewall height is okay because of truss systems and everything like that. Sometimes that has to occur. But what we, so what we're looking for is when you're pitching your roof, we're gonna allow whatever expansion or height difference is needed to get the trusses to, to pitch your roof. It's not going to allow for loft. It's not going to allow for any sort of other second floor livable space, storage, crawl space up in the attic, anything like that. So you can pitch your roof. And with t today's truss systems, usually, you know, someone, you are going to have a, a change in height, but that's going to be something that we'll review. But it wouldn't be that second story or the loft area that you're proposing now. So I guess, Mr. Chair, yes. I think you all know how you're going to vote yes. and under what conditions you're going to vote. So my recommendation is that you vote, get it on the record why you're voting the way you are voting, and then, and then if those all shake out, you know, majority yes, then, then, you're gonna, then you're going to talk about conditions that you all 
will need to agree on to place on there. The and then you're going to do your. Have to agree to the that. applicant doesn't necessarily have to agree. This is what you, as a board, under these circumstances, this is what we. This, these are the circumstances under which we will grant the variance. What the applicant gets to decide then is if they're going to <coughs> act on that variance or not. If they agree with those and are willing to abide by those conditions, then they go ahead and pull the permit and act on the variance. If they're not willing to do that, then they don't act on the variance and work within their rights of the ordinance that they have. So do we want to set conditions before we vote or set, do, do, as Amy suggested, uh, give our reasons and uh, what conditions we're voting yes or no on? I would, I would propose that if there are conditions that any board member has that would uh, allow them to vote in a certain way that they state that now so that we're all clear when we're voting what that might be. Otherwise, you're going backwards. Mr. Chair, I think it we talked about confusing. four. We talked about four conditions. Yeah. Are there any others that you would be keeping in mind as you're voting? Mm -hmm. It would be the cabin at least 50 feet from the lake, the stormwater management plan, removal of the patio, and downsizing of the accessory structure. <coughs> Those are the four. Are there any others that would be entering into your train of thought as you're voting? that you want to get on the record now? I have none. I don't have any. Okay. So okay. I, I would say those are the four, and if you're voting a certain way because of one of these four, then you need to cite that in your response when you're answering the questions. Okay. Very good. Okay. All right. We're ready for the questions. I'm ready. Is the request in harmony with the general purposes intent of the Morrison County Land Use Ordinance and Comprehensive Plan? Um, with those four conditions in mind, <coughs> yes. Myself. Clint? Um, yes, with the 50 feet from the lake and the stormwater plan. Dave? Same as Clint. Yes, with 50 feet from the lake and a stormwater plan. Uh, Marv? Yes, I originally was going to go no, but yes with uh, the four conditions. And Brent? Uh, I will say yes uh, with three conditions, the 50-foot uh, setback, the stormwater uh, review, and the removal of the pavers. Okay. Okay, uh, number two is the applicant proposing to use the property in a reasonable manner not permitted by the land use ordinance. Yes, with the four conditions. Uh, okay, sorry, Clint, you're supposed to be speaking. Yes. With all four conditions? Yes. Okay. Dave Brucher? I say yes with the two conditions. <laughs> okay, and Marv? I say yes with uh, four conditions. And Brent? Um, I say yes with the three previous stated conditions. Okay. Will the issuance of the variance uh, maintain the essential character of the locality? Um, we'll start out with uh, Dave. Yes with the two conditions. Marv. Yes with three conditions. Brent. Yes with the same three conditions I have previously stated. And uh, myself was yes with four conditions. And Clint. Yes. Okay, um, is the alleged practical difficulty due to circumstances unique to the property? Um, starting out with Marv. Yes, and I don't think we need any conditions for them. Okay, Brent. Yes. Myself is no. Clint. Yes. And Dave. Yes. Number five, is the need for the variance created by actions other than the landowner or prior <coughs> landowners? Uh, starting out with Brent. Yes. Myself is no. Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. And Marv? Yes. Okay, number six, does the alleged practical difficulty involve more than just economic conditions? 
Myself is uh, no. Clint? Yes. Dave? Yes. Marv? Yes. And Brent? Yes. Okay, we've got a variety of yeses uh, in the first three questions. Correct? Mr. Chair? Yes. Just to simplify, because the only way it's going to pass is I'd make a motion to approve with the four conditions. Okay. I second that. Any discussion on the motion? There's no... One point of discussion. I wasn't here for the uh, passing of the um, conditional, or not the conditional use, but the variance for the shed. Uh, there seems to be a disagreement between the applicants and memory. That's done over with Brent. I, I don't know that we should need to discuss that. Well, but it's one of the conditions, so I think we do discuss it because we're talking about the removal of that shed. And as written, I, I'm reading the four corners of the paper that's in front of us, um, and that isn't, and that's why I, I made three conditions, not four, because the the reading of that paper does not say that it would be removed. It would it said to be relocated for the the placement of uh, a future home. You and should be considering their request and how the shed fits in with that request, not any prior. Well, but that, that, that was provided to me as a paper to read as the four corners are printed, right. and I'm just stating how I'm reading it, what it says, <clears throat> and it doesn't say that it would be removed. Now there's a condition to remove, so that's why I didn't uh, say to remove it. So, At, at the time, it didn't say they were going to build a two-story structure either. So, But we are today. Correct. That's why you've got to look at it through today's looking glass, not what... The board looked at it five years ago. Mr. Chair, I, Go ahead. And, and I want to clarify, the condition wasn't to remove the storage shed, it was to downsize reduce it, it, correct? Reduce the size? Yes. Is that correct? So, okay, I just wanted to make sure that that was clear. So, okay, so okay, motion was we have a motion. Seconded to, um, to approve this with four conditions. Um, Mr. Chair, I will... Discussion. I will need clarification if if you are going to grant this variance. Uh, I just uh, downsizing the accessory structure. I need something more specific than that. Correct. So I need a size. I would propose a typical storage shed, ten by ten, six six foot side walls. You know, whatever. Store your uh, garden equipment, lawnmower. That's it. Okay. There's a new house going up that should have storage space in it also. Okay. Any other discussion on the motion? Okay. We'll proceed to vote then. Roll call vote. Um, aye in favor, nay opposed. Uh, all in favor of um, granting the variance with the four conditions stated, um, say aye or nay. I will start out with uh, Marv. Aye. Brent. Aye. Myself is aye. Clint. Aye. And Dave. Nay. <coughs> okay. Um, Variance with conditions has been granted. Whether you pursue it and exercise that variance or not is up to you. you I think you know what you're entitled to if you don't. All right. I say motion carries. Yeah. All right, um, minutes. The only thing I saw in the minutes was a typo, compliant versus complaint. Um, I don't... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. We have to close up the meeting, but thanks for your time. Your clarification on this, you'll have to go to land services.
for that. And um, yeah. you can leave if you wish or save for the rest of our meeting. Uh, it's on item number two, um, third paragraph down. Uh, make the property complaint, compliant. That's all. Not a biggie. But complaint versus compliant is... Kenneth Brown. Oh, okay. Oh. All right. Are there any um, other additions or corrections to the minutes? I have none. I make a motion to accept the minutes other than that. I'll second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Old business? I have none. New business? I don't have any of that either. Okay. <coughs> Motion to adjourn. So move. Second that. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting adjourns at 839. Sorry I made it so difficult for you guys, but...